How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Tombstone's Takes. I am Tombstone. I love to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, and interesting about books, books, books. And today I am going to be discussing a big hulking brute of a book. Yes, and that book is Summer of Night by Dan Simmons. Like I said, this book is a hulking brute. Some books intimidate you by the sheer size factor. Look at this thing. I mean, it's big. It's fat. There's close to 600, 500 pages in here, maybe a little more. But look at the type on this thing. Look at the type on that. I mean, that's the, the smallest possible type at 500 pages. Some versions of this thing clock in well over 708 pages. But that should not be the thing that scares you. Not with a Dan Simmons book. Not with a Dan Simmons horror book. It should be the horror. And does that book, does this book scare? Well, let's find out. Okay, horror fans, I know that Summer of Night is a big hulking brute. And I know it's not quite as big as some of those other other big hulking brutes, even Dan Simmons' own Carry On Comfort, Stephen King's The Stand or It, Robert McCammon's Swan Song. It's not as big as many epic and high fantasies out there. We know that, but it's still a big hulking brute. The answer to the question on is it scary depends on you. I say this in every one of my horror reviews, discussions, Different things scare different people. So what scares me might not scare you. Did I find this book scary? Yes. And I'll tell you why in a moment. I want to discuss some things in this book. It, this review slash discussion may contain spoilers, but the main conceit of this book rests with that of a haunted school. Not just a haunted school, but a haunted bell. I know a haunted bell might sound a little bit ridiculous to some people, but is it really? We've seen cursed artifacts in the past. We know that people believe in haunted houses, at least in different kinds of legends and myths and lore. So a haunted bell in a haunted school, a bunch of pre-adolescent boys during summertime doing stupid things because that's what boys do during summertime. That conceit alone is enough to frighten people, but yet once you add into the fact that the bell knows that something's going on with the boys and begins to haunt them and hunt after them before they know what's going on, this makes it a little bit scarier. As is typical with Dan Simmons, he eases his way into the story. This is what people sometimes refer to as a slow burn. Some people might call it dull or plotting. I happen to like it. He introduces quite a few characters. You get the opportunity to get to know them. You get a little bit of the mystery of what's happening. You get some intrigue. And in the first half of the book, you've got one particular character, Dwayne, who's the smart one of the bunch, who goes to the library, and he does the research on the history of the school and the bell and finds out how and why it's haunted. And he's the one that leads the rest of the boys later down a path that can help save not only them, but the town from the evil. Because this book is a bully, Simmons has no problems being content to hurt, injure, maim, torture, kill, eradicate any of the characters in the novel whether or not they're young pre-adolescent boys and sometimes in gruesome ways. Um, there's one scene at the very beginning of the book uh, in order to show some of the haunting that's happening where one of the young boys climbs up the side of the building and he falls and it's rather gruesome. And in this particular case, spoiler, he doesn't die, but but it just shows that Simmons is willing to put his characters through the ringer and he's not afraid to do what it takes to scare you, to maybe up the kill count so that as horror fans, you can see that the haunting and the creatures that come from the haunting are those that are meant 
to be dealt with. One of the things that I really like about that fact that Dan Simmons is willing to put his characters through the ringer is that sometimes books today frequently um, they lack the ability to bring that conflict and tension and adversity to many of the characters. They're afraid to harm the characters. And by doing so, it neuters some of the tale. I, I sit there and I think, oh, they're not going to kill that character. And then no matter what danger they they put that character in, I never really feel that they're in danger because I already know that they're not going to kill the character because they've written the story in such a way that that character has to be the one to save the day. And so I'm never really felt like I'm in deep gripping the edge of my seat waiting to see what happens. But with Simmons, you never know. And he's willing to do it all. And that's one of the great things that can happen in a horror book. And one of the things that you want in order to be scared. I know that some people call this a coming of age story. And that's true. This is a fun story that delivers on the promise to unveil all the evils that's occurring with the school. And although the main cast really kind of consists of six boys, Simmons only really develops four of those boys' characters, and he does it in a way that you can feel for them as they go through the tragedies and the horrors that they traverse. Plus, he never really truly reveals the nature of the evil. You know that what creatures are coming at you, but he doesn't really get into their backstory, tell you what their motives are, or get to that point of us knowing too much about them, which creates that natural fear of the unknown that you can get in a good horror tale. I think this is one of the good things about the book. When we go into the fear of the unknown and we also get some of these tragedies that you get in a horror story, they begin to explore some larger questions about life in general. One of the things that I think is interesting about society today at large is that with social media, with the internet, with communication being able to happen right away, when a tragedy happens, there are so many people who are quick to blame others. They're quick to point out, well, this wouldn't have happened if X, Y, Z happened, blah, 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 blah. And they don't recognize that sometimes tragedy in life happens. Sometimes we're not going to be able to stop every bad thing that's gonna happen ever. And that's one of the, the themes that underlies this story is that when you look at these monsters or when you look at the evil that comes at the boys, this theme that's explored is the idea that life has hardships and that life has to, you have to overcome tragedy at times. You have to mourn for your friends. You have to mourn for those that you lose too early. It will always happen. It's the nature of life. And so we can see a little metaphor in some of those horrors that happen, this aspect of life and of coming of age and learning how to deal emotionally with the hardships of life. And I think that that's really interesting. Now, like any book, uh, Summer of Night has its flaws. Some of the nostalgia that's based that this book is based on, so it, it's obviously a book that's based on the nostalgia of the 60s, what life was like going to maybe at like a drive-in movie or a diner or something of that sort. And sometimes that nostalgia does creep on a little bit too long. Dan Simmons at times can be a little winded and that's okay. Um, I happen to enjoy it. But once that train starts rolling, there's no stopping. Once Dan Simmons gets into it, he gets into it and it's nonstop from there on out. And although I did say that the fear of the unknown is good and it does because it makes you scary, just because I'm a curious cat, I have a slight wish that the story would have included a little bit more details about the objectives and motivations of the evil within the school. But, and so that's more like a gripe or nitpicky thing. And that happens to me sometimes. I see some flaws like that. However, this is a, a well-rounded tale. And it was nice um, to see that Dan Simmons didn't end up with so many illogical mess of red herrings and plot holes that can happen when you have a supernatural tale. But Dan Simmons doesn't do that here. He keeps this straightforward and it keeps the, the train rolling. And that's what you gotta love.
But then again, like I said, this book is a big brute and it's kind of a bully. So you don't really need to know the motivations about a bully, right? So you're just going to let him hit you in the face? I don't know. Read this book, right? Despite the size of this book and how big it is and how how the nostalgia may go on a little bit, this is a fun tale. It's fun to read. Get into it. Dan Simmons is a master storyteller. There's a reason why he's been around for so long doing what it is that he does. Um, and if you do, when you do, you're going to find that you just might love the story like I did. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Tombstone's Takes. Have a nice day.